every nine minutes in Australia, somebody, somewhere, any age, any place, any gender, suffers a stroke. Stroke kills more women than breast cancer, and it kills more men than prostate cancer. And one in six people in Australia will suffer a stroke in their lifetime. Scary statistics, but those as they are. And it's the leading cause of disability in Australia. And this year alone, 56,000 people will suffer a stroke and 1,500 don't know why. As Richard said, I'm one of those scary statistics. I'm classed as a young stroke survivor and I suffered a stroke five years ago after mowing the lawns with my gorgeous son, Patrick. I went inside, I overheated a bit and I collapsed. Was that the cause? Who knows? It was also a theory that the years of stress built up being a police officer and an investigator may have also caused that. I was very lucky, luckier than most, because I led a fit and healthy life. And due to that, I made a quicker recovery than most people. I was determined that the stroke was never going to affect my life, and I was going to carry on enjoying it as I did. So over the first three critical three months, I flew to the UK to see my nephew get married. I became an Australian citizen, and I flew to Melbourne to celebrate my 50th. I slept a lot. Fatigue is still an issue, but I had a blooming good time, I can tell you. I also got a rescue dog, and life was really good. My brain would only work in rhyme, so I wrote a few poems. Pretty cruisy life. It'll be okay. But then the festivities stopped, and I suddenly took uh, stock of where I was, and I suddenly realized that I'd lost my identity. I'd lost the Sheila that I was, and I couldn't find any road to hope, and sadly, I took the one at the time to despair. Being in bed, crying it out, I thought would be good. So I was diagnosed with post-stroke depression. Uh, I'm not ashamed to say it's an illness that many suffer from, and medication didn't really help. My life change for me was the following year when I met this beautiful lady, Melinda, a really good friend of mine, and she got me back onto a fitness trail again, but she also taught me mindfulness. She taught me things that I'd never really thought about. She said there's no word of can't. You can do absolutely anything if you're able-bodied. So taking those strategies in place, I decided that I would um, live my life, as she said. And I have five daily tips. Number one, always put on your positive pants every single morning. Woolly ones, if you must, if it's cold but you have to put them on and how you see your day is entirely up to you. And I'm not discriminatory. We have positive pants for men and positive pants for women. Surround yourself with positivity and people that empower you and turn the negative thoughts into positive ones. It's only in here where you turn that around. Number two, focus on what you can do, not what you can't. I forgot my old life, I had to do, and I was helping others with my poetry, so I published my book for others, and others are still getting help from that, so that was a huge thing to me. I started running, I started climbing, I've done some 10Ks, and I became a Stroke Safe Ambassador. Those are things that make me happy in my heart, and there were things I could do, which I still do to this day. Number three, be grateful. A grateful heart is a happy heart. And every single day, wake up with bucketfuls of gratefulness. I know sometimes we can be a bit grumpy, but look at the roof over your head and think about the things at the end of the day that you're really grateful for. Number four, celebrate your successes, however large or small they may be. We recently celebrated a young stroke survivor who could tie his own shoelaces after 18 months. That was huge to him, so dig deep. Number five, Live, love your life, because you've only got, unless you come back as a dog, you've only got one life to live, so make sure you make the very most of it. It's only up to you. And finally, what I'd actually like to say is thank you. I am very grateful for the supporters here today, and I hope I've given you a little stroke of inspiration. Thank you. Thank you.